I is Calvin Niles, the Mindful Storyteller, and I am delighted to share with you stories of awakening. Each week, I'm going to be talking to people from around the world of various backgrounds and experiences. People I love, I know, and people I admire, but also those who are completely new to me. One thing all my guests will have in common is that they have been through a journey of awakening. By awakening, I mean a call to higher consciousness and deeper self-awareness beyond material reality. These stories will be real, challenging, funny, stimulating, and insightful. We're going to take our good time with these conversations. So listen from your comfy chair with your favorite drink, or on your weekend stroll, your morning routine, or whatever makes you happy. Stories of Awakening with me, Calvin Niles, and I look forward to you tuning in. <laughs> Camilla. Let's do it. Hi. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Had a bit of a delayed start, but um, but we're here nonetheless. Yes. Nothing ever happens at the wrong time, as they say. That's true. <laughs> oh, I like that. I like that. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I, I met you um, at your uh, art exhibition in London, and I know that you had flown in from Dubai, if I'm not mistaken, That's right. That's right. For, for your exhibition. And you had a really powerful story right at the entrance to your exhibition about really the genesis of a lot of the work that you created. And in your whole experience of waking up to a different reality, and I just thought, i got to get Camellia on the show. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. Thank and, you. Um, thank you for having me. And it was, yeah, it was great. Uh, and it was a coincidence. I mean, there are no coincidences, but, you know, how, you, you know, I met you guys and we just start talking and, you know, it was sort of like we were on this similar journey and, you know, you guys were doing all these things and I was, you know, doing this art thing. And then um, uh, the guy that you were with as well, what was his name? Um, uh, Shamash, one of my friends. Yeah. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're, so, you know, it was such a pleasure uh, talking to you guys. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited and honored to be uh, on your podcast. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I guess my, I always start with a very basic question. You start wherever you like, you know, and that is, where did this whole journey of awakening all begin um, for you? And I know that, you know, in your in your art exhibition, you it reflects a very powerful experience that you've been having um, ever since you were looking after your dad. But is was that the beginning um, of your kind of waking up moment or where did your whole journey of awakening to higher consciousness begin? Um. Well, I mean, it's, I've always, I mean, it depends on what you mean by higher consciousness. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I was always very spiritual. Uh, I came, I grew up uh, in a religious sort of background, but uh, also spiritual because um, there was a difference, you know, the way that they teach religion uh, to children, especially here. I mean, I, I'm a Muslim and, um, you know, it was there was a lot of fear based um, around the religion, but actually the philosophy I liked, like the basis of it I liked, but it was just uh, this fear factor, which I had a problem with uh, growing up. And, um, and actually uh, I moved schools quite a bit. And, uh, um, you know, I grew up from in the UAE and then I moved to Iran and then I moved to Switzerland and then to London. And so there were very uh, different sort of um, um, environments and, um, you know, different cultures, religions. And I always sort of kept the spiritual side of me. I, you know, I've always had um, sort of clairvoyant dreams uh, as a child. So uh, often I would see things and they would happen um, or I would meet people before I met them. So um, it was interesting. I didn't quite understand it when I was a child. And actually, um, it used to scare me, especially the, the not so nice ones. I, I was sort of 
it used to give me anxiety. I was like, oh no, well, this is going to happen now. And, you know, I sort of wait for it to happen because I don't know when it's going to happen. That's the thing. Um, so, uh, you know, so I always had that. And, you know, I had a grandmother uh, that, you know, sort of um, I lived with and she, uh, she used to be, see spirits and she used to actually speak about, you know, seeing spirits all the time. And she was quite religious as well, even though um, she was illiterate, um, you know, uh, it was, it, she was a fat, fascinating lady. So. Hi, if you're enjoying this conversation, you might like SOAR Book Club. Many similar conversations are happening in SOAR Book Club, a book club for the spiritually curious. If you like spiritual books and community, then why not join SOAR, where we can grow together, learn together in a fun and nurturing environment. Click the link below in the description to find out more about SOAR Book Club or to find out how you can join. It'd be nice to see you there. Um, I never had that disconnect. And to me, um, I think spirituality and awakening, the true awakening that I had was after the experience that I um, described um, when my father was sick and I was his carer for 10 years. And uh, especially when he, you know, he had diabetes and uh, after the fifth year, um, he had a stroke and so he was bedridden. He couldn't see, he couldn't, uh, sp you know, eat, speak, move. And, but he, he, he could listen, you know? Um, so he was completely, um, uh, immobilized and, you know, I had done the research at that point on subliminal messages, on binaural beats, on, um, uh, on, you know, the divine numbers and frequencies. And I started to experiment on him and myself, um, because at that point I was extremely depressed. Um, uh, I had a very, very unstable childhood as well. So I had a lot of this, you know, back end of, uh, of a lot of trauma. And, uh, and, you know, now I was, I found myself in this situation where I felt trapped. I couldn't really, um help myself or help my my father and you know he was the only you know person that I I grew up with him and so you know he met he met the world to me and um and yeah and the the true awakening started to happen uh then where I started to um sort of you know, experiment and and um research and learn about a lot of different modalities. I think the most profound experience I ever had, though, would have been when I almost died. Uh, I, was, I think I was around 20. This must be around 20 something years ago. Wow. Uh, I was in my early 20s and I had had a surgery and um, and I, I got a fever and I, I you know, I was um, sort of dying. <laughs> I thought they, they did all these tests and they didn't know what was wrong with me. And I sort of spoke to God uh, and I said, well, you know, I know I haven't been so great, you know, <laughs> thus far, but, you know, if you, um, if you heal me, then I promise uh, I would, you know, read the entire Quran and sort of research all these, you know, theological practices and just try to become this, this better human being that I've sort of been procrastinating uh, at being and uh, and of course right after that I actually found a bump so after a month of testing they couldn't find anything and I sort of uh, touched and I found this bump on my stomach and they found that there was an infection and you know it was an abscess and I had to do an emergency operation and I was cured I was fine after that and and, um, and actually you know I sort of forgot about that promise uh, as we tend to do for about a year or two. And, uh, and, you know, uh, when I, you say, when you say the promise, you mean the promise you made to God that you would, to, to God you'd be, that yeah, I, you'd, you'd be devout and clean your life up devout, sort of and thing. So I, because I was a Muslim, I hadn't actually read the entire Quran from page to base, uh, from, from face to face. And so at that point, I was, and it was difficult because Arabic is not my mother tongue. Farsi is my mother tongue. And so, you know, I learned Arabic, I speak Arabic, but actually um, it's, it's a secondary language. And at that point, you know, 
I was sort of, I was shying away from it. I was more, I was more bound to tradition as opposed to the religious aspect of it because um, it was taught in a fear base to me, you know, mm. and, uh, and when I, two years down the road, I actually um, did read it from in three days, actually from cover to cover. And when I tell you um, it took me some time to do that. So I, I had to lock myself up. <laughs> um and say okay right and it was in ramadan so ramadan is a holy month for us um and we uh you know fast is sort of like lent uh equivalent to christians and um and so anyway so i i, I sat down and i read uh you know this this quran from cover to cover and when you read the quran you're supposed to uh chant it in a way mm. uh so actually there is vibrational impact when you do that so um it was interesting what happened actually so i went to sleep it was around dawn and uh and i experienced this light it was the most profound amazing thing that's ever happened to me i felt like this entity or light or whatever it was entered the window and sort of and I was sort of scared. I was awake, but I, I closed my eyes because I was scared to open it because I was like, what is this, an alien? Like, what is what am I, you know, what am I experiencing right now? And I was waiting for it to communicate. And I, all I felt was unconditional love, light. And like every single cell in my body was sort of being pulled towards this light um, like a magnet. And, you know, and it didn't really communicate anything to me. And it just sort of hit me where my stomach was and it just kind of flew off. And it was so light in the room that as soon as it left the room, I opened my eyes and I thought, gosh, did that just happen? Like, what was that? And yeah. I started asking, you know, people, um, you know, what was that? And, you know, these religious scholars and they didn't really have an answer. They said, well, that was a lovely dream. I thought, well, <laughs> except it wasn't a dream, you know. And now people are going to think I'm crazy and whatnot. Anyway, so um, many years later, um, when I started to study theta healing and um, sort of art therapy, it's quite beautiful because um, with NLP as well and any sort of awakening that you have, you sort of link it to whatever religious religion, even if you choose to leave it or, you know, it's what your base, your programming is, your base programming. And you sort of link it and you think, ah, that's what that was. You that know? must be, yeah, this, this thing must be that linked to that or exactly. you, have, you need some way to frame it, right? Exactly, exactly. Mm. So that's what I did. And I, you know, this, this notion of unconditional love and light and beings and, you know, we are surrounded by angels and I, I, I truly believe that. And, you know, in your time of need, if you really connect, you, you know, irrespective of what religion or where you're, you know, you're from, you are going to be shown this light because it's universal. Love is universal. And, you know, God is universal and it's within us and, you know, around us. And it's, it's wow. quite, uh, it's quite beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is a very comprehensive introduction to your experience <laughs> <laughs> and uh, i'm actually thinking and back to so you've had this part with your father which you you think is probably one of the more significant ripples of your experience um but even going back to your early 20s yeah. and you were saying you know you kind of had this guilt that you weren't living the way god wanted well i'm putting words in your mouth here if i'm honest no no you're, you're the, absolutely right yes, yes. you it, it sounded is, uh, to me like you were feeling a bit like oh i haven't really been doing what god wanted me to do is that yeah. what you meant by by um the fear-based part of your religious experience or when you say well you know it's it, i'll tell you my fear the fear base is like if you do not because the basis is like be a good human being give alms charity smile can be a charity you know um you know just be a, a good human being literally and you know we're told to pray and our prayer is essentially meditation so now i know so so i for example like the prayers that we have to do and we have to read these verses but 
the verse that we read five times a day in every single prayer is the one for gratitude. And so this is what I say, there's a link. So gratitude now, when I studied, you know, about these modalities and I did, you know, all this research is gratitude is the highest vibration that you can have. And in order mm -hmm. to manifest anything in your life, you have to be grateful. That is, the, that, that is when you're in the vortex. That is when you are at your most powerful, you know, and, and mm -hmm. aligned. Uh, so, so to me, it was like, why do I have to pray like five times a day? I, you know, I don't, I'm not even concentrating or you're like bending down. I mean, I'm talking as Muslims, you know, like, and I have to wash and I have to cover my hair. And if I don't cover my hair, am I going to go to hell? Is it going to okay. burn my, mm. uh, my, you know, I'm going to go boil in Medusa's like, you know, <laughs> pot of like, yeah, you know, <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so, right. you know, that's what I meant. Like I wasn't doing yeah. exactly everything as, as I should or was taught to do. Um, or, and if I didn't do it, I would be punished, you know, uh, in the afterlife. Yeah. Whereas now if I meditate or, or choose to pray, I do it because I, I understand that it helps me that it, that it actually aligns me that I, I do it with pleasure. And, and it's, uh, I, you know, it's none of that, um, sort of, Oh, I'm just doing it out of duty. It's great to create a habit where you wake up a certain time and you meditate, you know, and you align yourself. Um, but at the same time, you know, it's like when you're forced to do something and you don't quite understand why you're doing it, uh, it's a very different story. And that's, that's what I meant. Um, I, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Got, got it. Right. So, um, so yeah so you're feeling this fear and like guilt and then you got sick and you're thinking is god punishing me for not doing something right or not doing something properly and yeah and then was it you did recover did you say then two years after that you then decided to read the quran face to face back yeah, to back, yeah. cover to cover and so um and that was when you kind of when did the moment happen when you started to sort of evolve out of religion so to speak not not that not that you aren't you know a practicing muslim or that you are but it sounds to me well like, i i would say i am a muslim and i haven't actually left the faith yeah but i also also think that i am i believe in every single um theological practice because i think there's truth to it mm -hmm. and i wouldn't I don't discriminate uh, discriminate against any any religious practice. I think we are essentially all uh, connected and aligned to the same source. I think we just use different sort of um, language in order mm -hmm. to access it. Mm -hmm. And uh, and to me, Islam and uh, the way I practice it and I choose to practice it is my language. Mm -hmm. Whereas you know, to someone else, it might be they might speak a different language, but they're essentially doing the exact same thing. So mm -hmm. um, that's how I see it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not like I, I wouldn't say I got. I, I think I this break from where really I accepted we are all one and we are all connected and we are essentially here to expand our souls. Yeah. And, yeah. and, when, and that, single, when did that kind of that break? So I guess that's what I was trying to that find was out. When is... My father, when my father passed away. Yeah. When my father mm. passed away, I think throughout, I was just uh, going through the steps where I, you know, was um, experimenting and I was really lost in the science but to really feel and understand it was really after his passing. Um, I went through this, uh, and it would be three years now, um, where I just uh, decided that you know, um, you know, I, I I just combined the whole thing really. Whereas before it was very segregated. So I had, you know, the studies on subliminal messages. Then I had you know, NLP, then I, uh, and I, I did all this like different works, uh, studies on esoteric practices, different theological practices. And it was sort of like, I was trying to find the common ground, but when I actually started vibrating, it was about three years ago. So, and I think there's a difference. Um, whereas when you know about it and when you start actually vibrating it, what you, mm. what you, what you know, um, mm, yeah. So, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I'm hearing you there. Um, yeah so you you kind of had this whole quest 
um, yeah. from your 20s, basically onwards for 20 years plus, where you were inquiring, you were um, trying to please God so he can save your life when you first got ill, then you started to, where did the art come in? Because I know you're a, a, a absolutely fantastic artist. Thank and, you. And you do, I mean, that was w- obviously what, you know, f- how that was my entry point to you, seeing your exhibition yeah. and seeing the really powerful work that you did. And there was a piece that I saw um, and it was, I think it was, was it the drum or well, did you have a piece with your father's face on it? Or very, yes, 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 yes. Was that the drum? No, I had drums. Uh, yeah. So I started to paint on drums and I had uh, one of my, uh, one of my, my father's uh, painting, which is where, you know, he communicated through me beyond death. It was called beyond death. Mm. And, and the show is called signals. And in fact, I have, signals dubai happening in two and a half weeks uh you know here so oh, with some I, thank you so much so yeah i mean the drums was basically um the manifestation of 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 what i was trying to 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 describe in a physical form i i had done all this research for quite a while and i didn't know how to communicate it i the art i've always been into art and um i've been dyslexic my whole life and i you know quite severely so so i you know would love to write things down and um you know sort of express myself but i i'm you know a visual communicator so uh and part of it was just to express what i was feeling like as an as art therapy really as an artist and the other was to also express uh you know my findings of you know frequencies what frequencies are uh waves emitted uh through man uh you know through instruments of man and nature um how it's affecting us um you know on a subliminal level on a physical level um you know i actually did this experiment where i actually you know, stop, um, you know, all uh, media receptors. So no TV, uh, I only watch documentaries. So no, no TV with any ads or any, any advertisement, uh, no radio, just music that I had no words, um, you know, so just, you know, just uh, acoustic music um, and a lot of uh, audio, audio books uh, and, and, and documentaries. Um, So, uh, and that's what I did. And I started listening to subliminal messages and I wanted to see if I could change my behavioral patterns, you know, and that it was just curiosity really. And at the same time, uh, I wanted to help myself. I went to help my father. I started playing um, with, uh, you know, um, the divine frequencies um, uh, that, you know, you can play that heal your DNA. Um, I started uh, experimenting with, you know, Quran chanting, you know, just any sort of different sort of uh, vibrational frequencies to see how it was going to affect myself and my father. And the reason I chose to to stop uh, the the TV because a lot of people ask me, um, it was it was mainly because initially when I was buying these um, uh, subliminal messages. Um, the owner of the website basically told me there were these it's a couple they're psychologists and they they told me what are you doing with all these like uh you know you are you selling them I said no I'm not selling them I'm just experimenting and you know she said well they don't actually work um because you have so much stimuli uh around you and you know you're being bombarded on a on a daily basis whereas you would have to you know if you wanted to change this many uh, behavioral patterns you would have to stop um all these stimuli I said well that's not a problem I can do that and like anything it was like a junkie you know I it was two weeks off one week on one week off and then two weeks off two weeks on and this is when I started to see see the changes of my mood of how I was feeling how and and this was before this whole like social media hype whereas you know we had Facebook and you know I don't remember Instagram Instagram Mm. was there but it was like not so mainstream we didn't Mm. have this AI uh targeting sort of um ads where they do where you know they study your behavior and you you know they target you so this is like on a whole different level so um yeah I did it and um 
you know, I did change my behavioral patterns. Um, but the awakening uh, mm. didn't happen at that point. It happened yeah. after. Yeah, so that's really interesting because you're doing all of this almost groundwork. <laughs> There's a yeah. lot of prep work going in here yeah. with all of this experimentation. Uh, and that curiosity that took you to do these experiments, what was driving that? I mean, you mentioned behavioral change. You know, was there something in particular you wanted to change? I know you already mentioned you wanted to communicate with your father, help him heal and so on. And then I know that was featuring, wasn't it? That was a yeah. feature of your experimentation. Yeah. 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 Um, but you talking about behavioral change and things like that, you know, what, what was the fire um, sort of fueling that curiosity to experiment here in the first place? I actually was very unhappy. I did not like myself um i you know grew up uh, you know i had a broken home i didn't live with both my parents since the age of six uh so they were like visiting but they weren't there um i had weight problems uh, i have an i had an addictive personality uh so i had obesity um you know i was very very depressed um uh anger issues abandonment issues uh, you know, just the whole round, uh, <laughs> you know, typical, <laughs> Yeah, you're typical. But um, so I, when I was trying to change my behavioral patterns was I was not happy where I was at. I felt stuck off often um, in terms of uh, I didn't like the way I looked. I, I didn't like the way I felt. I was constantly scared. Uh, I had anxiety. Um, I even was on antidepressants. I mean, I, I was on antidepressants for a while. I, this is, a, you know, now it's been, um, I would say, six months now that I, I completely off all medications. And I'm very, very happy and proud to say that. But, yeah, you congrats. know, I had to do a lot of self-development and a lot of work uh, in order to, to get where I am. But, um, yeah, so I, you know, initially when I say behavioral change, it started off with, with small things like, well, it wasn't so small, like smoking, you know, I've always been on and off smoker. Uh, I said, okay, well, I think I will try and see if I can break the habit. And it worked. Mm. Uh, if I want, I hated running. I was never a runner. I actually didn't really like most uh, exercises apart from join, join the join the non-running uh, club with me <laughs> apart from dancing I uh, you know I didn't actually like anything else and um, I became a runner actually um, you know for a while anyway uh, I'm not not a run, runner right now but I was a runner for for at least a year and a bit I um, I did do it um, Having said that, you know, these, these messages that you're receiving, so you repeat them for 40 days, but it doesn't mean that you will never regress and go back. It's, it's like a continuous thing and it's also free will. Um, and if you really accept it. So now uh, studying epigenetics, I know that, you know, I basically had, you know, issues with like my joints and structure and bones. And therefore I was running and I was a runner and I was enjoying running and I was getting the runners high, but then I didn't take into account you know, the joint problems I was going to have, you know, so, um, you know, uh, it's a, it's a, lear uh, it's a learning curve. Uh, it's a, it's a learning process. Um, the other yeah. thing was addictive personality, uh, you know, so with addictive, so I was, you know, I had an eating disorder, uh, and that went into, you know, smoking disorder and shopping disorder, like, in a, you can imagine it just, yeah. uh, yeah. it just goes on and on one thing um, replace the other replace the yeah, other. So yeah you, yeah so you you kind of realize this pattern that you wanted to break out of yeah and and that kind of fueled the experiment as well yeah and absolutely. did that did that experiment happen before your father had a stroke or did that happen after um i would say it happened before right so yeah. when by the time you came to care for your father you yeah. were already doing some work um, yeah because you have to understand that my father he had diabetes and um 
he was very headstrong and, you know, he used to smoke seven cigars a day and, you know, do what he liked. And, and so, um, he was diabetic for, for, for decades and he didn't really care about his health and we're eight children. And so we were like, basically we were, um, he had eight kids, several wives and, uh, and we were just, you know, the 10 years when I'm talking about the stroke, post stroke, he couldn't communicate. Therefore, I, you know, we were taking decisions and I was his carer like full time. Whereas before that, it was literally we were living in hospitals like, oh, he would have a heart attack. Oh, no, we have to go to Germany now. We have to, you know, like for yeah. months and months. And then there was like, you know, after that, it, it was a continuous thing, whereas I was in hospitals for long periods of time. And for anyone who's been to hospital and, you know, it's depressing just going for one day, let alone, you know, staying in there for months and months at end and then sleeping there and then getting up and then going to another hospital, as well as the drama that was surrounding this whole, it wasn't just a sickness. So there was no like structure or support or any of that. So there was drama in the background. Um, so, you know, it adds up, the stress adds up. Yeah. Uh, so by the time he got a stroke, um, I mean, that was just, uh, you know, that was like a breaking point, I, I would say. Mm. Uh, actually, you know, I actually turned our house into an ICU unit, um, you know, for, for five years. So uh, we had, and then he would, he would, so actually once he died and he came back after 15 minutes, like it was a, a constant yo-yo situation mm. like ambulances on a monthly basis like it was yeah it was wow. intense yeah yeah i can imagine that that roller coaster was not um was not an enjoyable experience so so this is you're going through all of this and changing yourself intentionally changing i appreciate change is going to happen anyway <laughs> you know these grays eh? these grays yeah. weren't there these yeah. grays weren't there a couple of years ago believe me yeah. so yeah. so you're going through all these changes um and then you're starting to, are you starting to have kind of in insights along the way but then you kind of mentioned something here where where you said but it wasn't really until your father's passing where you had your kind of real powerful moment Are, yeah. can you can you describe what was happening for you at that moment um i think that you know initially when i lost him i was hoping for a miracle i was hoping for him to get well uh, again i wanted to see a miracle because i had seen several miracles before that but i was waiting for the miracle and I, I think I was the only one that didn't actually want to let him go um, completely. Uh, some, something in me wanted to save him somehow. I don't know what I was thinking. So when that didn't happen and he passed away, I was really distraught. You know, on one hand, I knew that he, had su he was suffering for such a long time. And everyone said that, you know, he's finally at peace. But I was distraught. I, I actually, even though they told us he was going to die for five years, he was supposed to die any minute, you know. So, <clears throat> so for six months, I actually didn't leave my flat much. Uh, I came to London and I actually stayed in London for six months and I didn't actually want to see anyone and talk to anyone and uh, do anything. So, um, and I became very, very angry and sad and uh, sort of hopeless, really. So, um, and I think that's when I, the healing process started after the six months that had passed, the morning. Um, I started working, um, I started getting help, actually. I got help from a wonderful um, psychologist and, and uh, biofeedback pra practitioner. Uh, I started uh, using homeopathy. Uh, so I was, you know, taking the right herbs. Uh, slowly, slowly, you know, it's, it, it all just came together. And then I started to study theta healing, actually. And that really helped me. Um, 
So theta healing is a modality um, that combines psychology and spirituality and uh, epigenetics. So, um, so through prayer and meditation, uh, you can visualize and see your DNA and your, first of all, you regress and you, there's a lot of psychology work you're digging um, because the basis of the belief work is that yes, you you are conditioned and your beliefs are whatever you accumulate from zero to seven years. So all the traumas and your belief systems are created then, but also you are also carrying in your morphogenetic field. So above your DNA, there's like an energy field where you are carrying belief systems and traumas from your ancestry line up to seven generations and possibly at a history level. Uh, so there's four levels. And through the law of visualization and prayer, so you you know you you can remove and change these belief systems through meditation and belief work. Um, belief work is done through digging, through releasing certain programs and belief systems, and also through forgiveness. Uh, the biggest blockage of any manifestation and abundance in your life is resentment, regret, and rejection um so once you and it's and there's free will you know free will so if you decide that you want to change something but actually your higher self is not allowing you to because they're feeling safe then you, that's your free will you know you're not ready uh and i think the awakening happens at the right time like you said you know everything happens at the time that it's supposed to happen and i was that is when that is what i needed to go through uh, in order to be ready to 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 let go of uh, a lot of belief systems, a lot of um, uh, resentment, uh, a lot of the trauma that I had, um, and I'm still working on it. You know, I you know it's a, it's 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 a work in progress. I'm not I'm not a floating Yoda at the moment. So you know, I aspire to be one. <laughs> You know, that's, I mean, and that's what's so beautiful about these conversations, you know, um, I've said it before, and, you know, it's, nobody comes on here pretending to have made it to the mountaintop, yeah. <laughs> you know, everybody is on their own path, on their own journey, still unfolding, um, yeah. and that's what I love, because, you know, I don't have, have, I don't have a clue how these conversations are going to go. And all, a lot of the time, I haven't got a clue what's going to happen in my own life tomorrow, far less who's going to be on the show. So, yeah. so this kind of unfolding is a nice word. I love to use that word. Um, and, and that's what I'm getting from what you're saying. So I really appreciate uh, you sharing that. Oh, thank um, you. Your art. I'm coming back to the art again, because mm. I'm wondering when did your art start to change as your consciousness started to change? did you i imagine your art started to change of course i haven't seen all your historic work i've seen the yes. stuff that you've been producing around yes. the the vibrational work yeah um when did that start to change i imagine it would have you know as you talked about in this big moment in your life but how did it change what would can you identify the way that your expression had shifted so initially, I was painting a lot of, uh, if I go back in my, in my 20s, post my uni years, I my favorite thing to do was, was portrait, uh, portraiture. And often I would use very morbid uh, colors. In fact, I can't even display them any, anywhere because I get sad when I look at them, not because the subject was sad, it was I was sad. So anything that was coming out of me was extremely sad. Um, it's funny because when I started the research um, around the whole vibrational frequency and I started to, uh, you know, learn about divine frequency and um, sort of uh, sacred geometry and, you know, all of these things, I was already sort of channeling what I would be practicing later on. It's quite interesting how that happened. So it was sort of like a premonition, if you will. Yeah, um, that's your clairvoyancy again. You know? Yeah, so <laughs> it's, it's quite interesting how that happened because now when I look at it, I say, oh, oh my God, I see like totally different things. Whereas when I was going through, I was like, oh, this is, you know, 
sacred geometry and sort of intuition coming out and, you know, the thread of life. And I started combining all of these, um, you know, sort of threads and textiles into, you know, drums and, you know, you know, ge geometric shapes. And when it really started to change is when I started to do uh, energy work. So when I was doing energy work, I sort of let go and let flow, <laughs> you know, literally like the style changed and it mic, was mic drop moment mic drop moment <laughs> 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 that's amazing so, yeah that's mm. basically when it happened it's just mm. the style completely changed the colors change uh everything changed really yeah the wow. energy the energy changed so uh for my exhibition i have to i mean i didn't do it completely in london but for this one i've definitely release some soul fragments from these paintings because uh, especially the, the, I think I've got two now that are quite powerful, but they're quite negative. And so I have to clear them because. Um, Is this two pieces of art, you mean? Yes. Yeah. From, from, from how I was, you know, it was basically portraying how I was feeling, which is, you know, numb and entrapment. So I have a mm. piece that's called numb and entrapment. In fact, um, I, I was going to share it on, on, you know, your, but I, then I didn't, I just shared the, 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 the it would be wonderful positive, to see. It would be wonderful. Positive ones. No, it would be. Ones. I think know, I ran out of <laughs> megabytes or something. Like it was like, oh, you've reached your limit. I said, okay, that's a sign. I'm not putting the negative ones. You know, hey man, email them to me. You know what? I love, I do love to embrace the whole spectrum. Um, and if you, if you are will still willing to share, I would be delighted to put them on, on the show because, you know, it's part of the journey, man. Part of It's part of your journey. And, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes I personally find sometimes like negative and positive, those words can be, they can be hindrances sometimes. Um, but yeah, it'd be lovely to see, you know, um, that part of the journey. And it's just embracing the full spectrum of the human's experience. No, <laughs> absolutely. Mm. absolutely and actually my my show was because it was done over so several the paintings were done over several years uh and and it you know there was so many different stuff like there was different like it was a journey of how i was feeling and so i it, it was i was watching people because it went on for three weeks the the show yeah. and um whoever was getting drawn to certain paintings, I knew where they were at emotionally. It was it was quite interesting. I was like, ah, okay, so you like this one. So now this because, is where you're because at. of the, because of the resonance, right? Because of the vibration, uh -huh, they're uh -huh. resonating with this mm. energy that mm. that you know because you can see a shift. There's a shift. Uh, so and and this was just you know my theory, and I was like, oh, that's where you are. And then the more I I spoke to them. I realized, no, they are like, if they are going towards the peace entrapment, then that's definitely what they're, they are. And that's what, how they're feeling, you know, because um, as, as a clairvoyant person or an energy person or an empath, people tend to tell you their stuff when they first meet you, you know, it's so, you know, you know, I was like, ah, okay. So, right. This is where you are, you know, um, it was quite, it was, it was a little like, you know, it was amusing to me to see where um, people were and, you know, in, in retrospect to my journey, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Wow. Super powerful stuff, man. Really, really enjoying. <laughs> and, and, and also, you know, I'm sort of having like little mini flashbacks of some of the works that I've seen too. Um, so where to for Camellia now then in terms of your, uh, your, your own, journey and next steps because I'm I'm kind of seeing that you've always had this you know seed of curiosity in you because of your own inquiry because of your own religious practices because of your own sort of discipline around the relationship with yourself and God as you went through your 20s but of course you're you're I'm hearing too that you know this unhappiness and the pain that you're experiencing really helped you to investigate some of these areas um which is the courage is quite incredible um where is all of this sort of this all packaged up now and created and put you on a new course a new trajectory i guess where to now for you what's your 
what's your next kind of step whether that's in your art or your vision or anything yeah so i have a few uh, i have an exhibition a solo another one coming up in dubai i have um two shows uh that i'm doing in london around june um and also i've been talking to this gallery of maybe putting together a workshop for art th therapy or theta art which is something that i'm trying to combine the two modalities and uh help i think ultimately it's i'm showing my art and i would like to grow as an artist but i feel like having been a, an entrepreneur i've had several jobs in the past and i i think unless you're giving it back or helping people um then it's really not worth it really i mean it's it, you know the the joy is not there and and this is what um i have several things that i would like to do uh in terms of compiling uh, uh compiling um healing modalities and maybe putting it together somehow and presenting it to the world or, or something like that so uh let's see i mean i have a few ideas but this is what um where i'm at so wow uh, well, one exciting yeah. one exciting piece of news is you're coming back to London, so that's that's good for me. <laughs> yeah, I definitely definitely. Let me know if I can bring you anything from Dubai. Oh man, uh, you know my camel milk chocolates. <laughs> well, I'll, 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 I'll give it a go, but I've never had it. <laughs> I haven't tried it. No, I keep buying it for people, but I haven't tried it. No, you I have, have actually. No, oh, I, have, right. I have. It's okay. quite it's quite um interesting. Yeah, you yeah. gotta try it. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll, if you will, we'll certainly try it together, and then right. at least we both have a new experience at the same time. Um, I love this this thing that you're saying too about, you know, the joy of helping others. Yeah, um, that's something I'm noticing in these kind of shows, or sorry, rather these conversations on this show. Yeah, uh, where after people kind of wake up to something bigger, there is an element of wanting to do more for others. I think that's a real common thread. And in a, in a previous episode, um, I did a season review. Um, and now I've spoken to you, I'm, I'm thinking the next season review has definitely got to bring this feature or this thread yeah. to light of wanting to serve others. And I guess your modality is to use the art and healing to combine, I guess, what you did in your own. Yeah, journey. that's what I did. Yeah, that's mm. what I did. But I, I'm i not going to say, I'm not going to stay rigid and say, this is where, how, this is how I'd like to, because I express myself through art. I think if it, others can too. Um, but having said that, I also have interest in combining more data as to different healing modalities in the in the world so you know maybe i can just you know compile data and pass it on and that's how i help people as well you know i mean you know this is i honestly i don't plan things um because i feel like life throws has thrown me so many curveballs that i just go with the flow so i receive what the universe gives me i have some plan in my head but i not like stuck to it where this is what i know absolutely this is what i'm going to do yeah. this is what i'm doing right now <laughs> you know yeah yeah the ultimate state of freedom yeah exactly <laughs> this is what i'm doing right now you know but i don't know yeah. what i would be doing but i would definitely want to help people and i think that giving back it's not about me making it big as an artist or as a name or even a brand because I had a children's label uh, at some point for seven years and you know it did really really well and I just thought you know it's a children's label I mean it's cute you know so uh, but you know I, I didn't feel that I, I didn't it didn't um, it didn't feed my soul you know mm. so and that's, I think for me, that's, um, that's what it's going to be about. How is it going to feed my soul? So, yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's a great, great note. I think for us to, to close on feeding yeah. your soul. Camelia, thank you so much for making the time. Thank um, you, Calvin. Yeah. It's a real honor. Really powerful story. I know we could probably talk forever actually um, <laughs> but, but let's have another conversation in june in person and yes 
um after you take your first bite of camel milk chocolate i will take the second (laughs) (laughs) Um, and yeah just look forward to seeing more of your work and um, i'll share some with the viewers as well um of the stuff that we've been talking about and uh yeah let's let's carry the conversation thank you for having me it's been it's been an honor of mine and um you know, it's amazing how you are compiling all this information and, you know, getting all these people and, you know, to share their their sport stories to inspire others. And I actually want to hear more about your story. So uh, maybe I'll interview you next time. <laughs> that sounds like a good plan to me. It sounds like it'd be right, a lot of cool. fun. <laughs> yeah. What is most meaningful for you in 2022? Is it healing and forgiveness? Is it love and belonging? Or maybe it's the courage to be and to act. Soar Book Club has all of this for you. If you want to read more and need accountability to keep you moving forward in your already busy life, are you looking for inspiration to develop your spiritual awareness? Maybe you want to be part of a positive community during these uncertain times or connect with like-minded people who love stories and books. Then join Soar Book Club. Hop on board. The train is about to leave the station and I would love to have you on the journey with me. So click the link below to join. That's Soar Book Club with me, Calvin Niles. I hope to see you there.